Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Now this video wasn't planned, but that seems to be just how all my videos end up being made. I have like a set idea of things I wanna make and then a random idea will pop up and I'm just like, well, everything else can wait cause now I need to make that. This idea has been in my head for a while, but I had like an overwhelming urge this time to make it. And we are going to be making a realistic hellhoundish houndoom. I've always loved the idea of people turning like cute Pokemon and just Pokemon in general into like their realistic counterparts. I just think that is so cool. And so I really wanted to do it with Houndoom. Houndoom is like one of my OG favorites. It's Gen 2, I just, one, two, and three, those are my favorite generations. Houndoom is special to me. So I was like, why not just make Houndoom? And it got me thinking like, if you guys are interested, and you guys like think of a Pokemon that you would like to see like realistified? Like drop it down in the comments and let me know because I might be doing more of these, I'm not sure yet. With all that being said, let's get started. Here I'm just showing a quick little rundown of how I've made Houndoom's eyes. I bought my sheets of eyes from Etsy and I'm just using a cabochon and gluing them on with a little bit of UV resin. Hi there friends, Editor Sarah here. And I just wanted you all to have this nice little calming ASMR moment brought to you by KP Creations. Please enjoy. The first step in making Houndoom is going to be making his head and feet. And the first step is that is going to be taking some tin foil, aluminum foil, or aluminum foil, and squishing that into the rough head shape that we're going for. Now, tin foil is very important for a few key reasons. The first being it is going to save you clay. Clay is very expensive, so we want to be as cost effective as possible. And using tin foil is going to make sure that you don't use as much as your clay as if it would have been a solid base. Another key reason, and specifically for art dolls, is that it's going to make your head lighter and so it's a lot less likely that it'll fall over when you're making the armature stage because it's not going to be solid massive clay so it's very important but once I have the rough head shape that I'm going for in the tin foil I just start covering that in a base layer of clay and start pushing things around and start trying to figure out where I want the eyes to lay <laughs> he's just a little derpy little guy and figuring out where I want the eyes to lay where like how long the nose is going to be things like that we're going for a very hellhoundish type of vibe for Houndoom like I, I want it to be clearly Houndoom but I also want it to be very much my style and so that's the kind of look we're going for and as you can see right there guys you see in that corner you see what I'm using what am I using guys what am I using say it with me now say it with me now references people references I'm using a ton of references and I will always drive it home until you guys hate me <laughs> that references are very important and I always highly recommend using them and there is no downside to using references it'll always help you see things in a different angle a different light when making artwork like and I'm not even just talking about anatomically correct muscle anatomy things like that I did use that for um, Houndoom especially to figure out the wrinkles of, of a angry an angry boy but I'm also talking about like inspiration things that inspire you that is also a reference that is something to reference um, when you're making your artwork and so like color palettes that you like or st styles that you like just things like that that's all reference and I highly recommend having it starting to record and my dog is digging a hole in my carpet. God, I hope y'all can hear that. <laughs> you're doing it right under me. You're just going to town. I'm supposed to be telling people about how they're doing the sculpting, but you're going to town on my carpet. What is this, life of a YouTuber? <laughs> Now for his mouth and teeth, I'm going to be using translucent Sculpey. And what this is, just when it bakes, it has a very translucent look and that's perfect for teeth and gums and anything that you want to give a very subtle paint effect to. It's really great for things like that. But as you can see right here, I am just taking a little bit of translucent Sculpey and then making like little teeth and making a bunch of them so I have a lot of options and then I got this idea from north of the border from Adam where you just take a little heat gun to it and that's to like 
solidify it a little bit just so I can stick the teeth into the gums and that they're not going to like I am very heavy-handed so I would immediately squish them otherwise so this was a very good tip to have just to get the teeth in place and make them stay in place I would use bacon bond to like really solidify them but apparently mine's old enough and it cured I I, I kept it in a dark place I don't I don't know what happened it dried out and I don't know <laughs> but I would recommend using that too Quick tip when sculpting fur, you want to make sure that you're not going the same direction the entire time and you want to really keep in mind about muscle anatomy so that way that the fur kind of flows more with the face. Sculpting the lower jaw was a lot harder for me than I thought it would be. I took a piece of tin foil and, and just added the same Super Sculpey over it to act as the bottom jaw, but I just... It was looking really derpy for a while. <laughs> and this is a moment where I was like, I was telling myself, I was like, trust the process, Karen. It's just, it's looking a little strange right now. He looking a little bit like Sid from, from uh, Ice Age, but it's fine. Just, just calm down, take it slow and work on it. And I'm glad I did because I ended up thinking that he's like the best, best, <laughs> he's the best like tooth creature I've made. Like I've made, toothy creatures a couple times and they've all like they've all leveled up every time I've done it but so far this is definitely the best one now the main design change I'm going to be making for Houndoom is I'm going to interpret all his like metal doodads and horns as bones so I am using cost clay which is a wonderful clay it is very flexible after baking and I'm going to be using that for his horns to make sure that I, if I knock him around they're not going to break in half but here I am just taking um, a tin foil, you know, you always got to start with the tin foil base. And I'm doing little noodles of clay and I'm putting them over the uh, horn. And then I'm just using a ball stylus tool to make a bunch of texture. And like, it took a few tries, but I think I finally got to like bony ish texture. <laughs> as long as it's vague enough that it kind of looks like it, that's, I, I'm happy with that. That's pretty much my, my like, eh, it kind of looks like it's good enough. <laughs> Now, in terms of his feet, I had actually previously 3D sculpted some and then 3D printed it on my 3D printer. I had a few different sizes and I had like a really big size that I never knew what I was going to use it for, but I kept it around and I'm glad I did because it ended up being the perfect size for Mr. Big Boy Houndoom over here because of course I make everything too big when I try to make them small. It's just my life. <laughs> Once he is fully done and baked in the oven at 275 degrees Fahrenheit for roughly 30 to 45 minutes because I always forget to say that and he is attached to his armature, it is time to build up the body. And for that I use quilt batting. Now quilt batting comes in these really big long sheets because they are made for quilts and then I just cut it into really long strips and wrap it around the body over and over and over again until it's built up to how I want. Now something I always mention and something that you really want to keep in mind if you ever do plan on making an art doll is that you really want to make sure that you don't build up the body quite as much as you want the final end result to be because whatever fabric especially faux fur fabric whatever fabric you're going to add is going to add a lot of additional thickness to the body so you want to keep that in mind when building it up in quilt batting so you want to give it just just make him a little bit more thinner than you mean to actually end up him being but like I always say, if you want chunk, chunk, chunk boy, you go and you get chunk, chunk, chunk boy. If you want thin, thin, thin boy, you go on ahead and get thin, thin, thin boy, okay? We support all body shapes and sizes here. Whoever you want, you go and you get it. Now, one of the Pokédex entries for Houndoom says, The pungent smelling flame that shoots from its mouth results from toxins burning in its body just lovely i decided to interpret that as uh lava and and all grossy things in his tum tum <laughs> and so i wanted to use lights to show that there's something emanating from his body plus i'm also going for the hellhound vibe with him so it just it made it sound right so i am just using some fairy lights that i'm gluing in a strategic way and covering that with a little bit of paint. I'm just making sure that the paint is nice and thin so it doesn't actually cover the light. You know, you don't want it too opaque, but just that it gives it that tint of like orange and yellow. And then I'm covering that in just a cotton fabric to just diffuse it a little bit. It looks a little strange, but it ends up working really, really well. The camera just has a hard time picking it up. And then after that, 
I'm using some hot glue to texture that area. Hot glue is very versatile, y'all. It is just, I, I am, yes, I love hot glue. Now I'm saying high heat hot glue and a really good hot glue gun, not that really bad, cheap hot glue. Okay, we don't like that. We like the good stuff, just to, <sighs> the good stuff. So <laughs> I'm just using that to texture and make it look kind of gnarly and, and a little gruesome in there. And then I'm gonna go back and paint it later to make it look like fire. I'm popping in for your not so daily reminder that if you've been thinking about something, if you've been thinking about an art project or just anything in general, and you've really been wanting to do it, but you've been saying to yourself like, I can't, I'm not good enough. Where do I even begin? I don't even understand. What happened? How about a habit? Let me just tell you right now, okay? No. You stop that right now, okay? I believe in you and you can go do the thing, okay? Just for this length of the video, go start that project while this video is running. Like, e just like even start planning the project that you wanna be doing because the first step is always the hardest. So once you get that out of the way, it's smooth sailing. I'm not believing you, you got this, you believe in me. So I believe in you, okay? I love you so much, go do the thing, okay? Also, before I forget, I'd like to show you these wonderful art pieces. Look at them. Aren't they so beautiful? Aren't they so lovely? Just mwah, mwah. If you've been thinking about sharing something with me, if you've been making an art doll or just fan art or just anything in general that you would like to show me, please use the hashtag KP Tutorials so that I can see it and I could possibly share it in my next video. Okay, now back to the video. <laughs> And once the body is all built up, it is now time to cut out the fabric to sew over it. Now, I, I never explained this correctly, so I, I hope the footage does a little bit better of a job than my words, because <laughs> words are hard. But basically, I'm just cutting a piece of fabric the entire length of the doll, and then I'm lining up where I want the fabric to meet at the legs, and I'm cutting a slit for the legs to slide through, kind of making it like a jacket on the art doll. And then I just cut and trim down the middle so that it's nice and snug around the body but not too tight that it won't be able to hold a pose and then I just sew straight down the middle <laughs> I'm just I please don't come to my channel for like actual sewing tips and and pattern making because mm -mm, it ain't it ain't here I don't know a, a thing about pattern making and sewing the only time I ever do it is if I'm going to mass produce like an art doll series or something that's the only time I'll do it otherwise we just kind of go for it and you know you stick some pieces of fabric together and then you're like oh hey it looks like a thing <laughs> Now to make sure I have access to the batteries of the fairy lights and a little something something else that didn't arrive in time. So if you'd like to see what that something else is, please check my Instagram. Just gonna do a little self promo right there. But to make sure that I can have access to that, I am using some Velcro strips that have adhesive on them. And I was concerned because I was just gonna sew them on because I was like, this adhesive can't be that strong. My God, I cannot pull it off. <laughs> Once sewn, it is now time to trim up this fluffy boy, and for that I'm using a pet shaver. And this is a tool I highly recommend if you're going to be making at least a couple of art dolls, because it just gets all the bulk fur off very quickly, very evenly and smoothly, and it has a bunch of different guards to do different trims on the fur, depending on where you want things to be long or short. I just, I highly recommend this tool. It has saved my life. I stand the pet shaver. <laughs> but that being said, I will always go back in with scissors and it is completely possible to just do this with siver scissors. I, I can't speak today. Scissors. It's possible to do it with scissors. You just have to make sure that you're being very careful and not taking off too much. You want it to go a lot slower because it is easy to take more away. It is impossible to put some back. And if you mess up, so bad you'll have to re-sew it and trust me I've done that a few times and I don't want you guys to go through that mess so just make sure you go in nice and slow but I always want to make sure I go back in with scissors especially around the legs just to make sure all those angles are really prominent and after that it's time for painting and Houndoom is very easy to paint because he is just black all over so I'm just doing a quick base coat in the color black making sure to not breathe when I get close to the teeth because my goodness we don't want to paint those black just hold your breath and, and pray <laughs> Now, also for his teeth, I took a lot of watered down paint. I really didn't want to mess up the translucency of this clay. And so I'm just taking some watered down paint and mostly just putting it in the very tops and bottoms of the teeth, um, just to show a little bit of wear and tear, um, you know, kind of like how a mouth would be. 
course his bony horns get a nice bone color and then I'm going to go back in with a wash and that's just again really watered down paint and I cover it all on a darker brown and then I take a paper towel and I wipe off most of that and that just instantly like levels up the paint job it makes all the details shine through like just it just mm, it looks so good it looks so dingy and grimy and I love it and if it's like ever a little bit too much of the dark color I can go back in with the original bone color and just lighten it back up on the very highlights and tops just to get some of that detail back but it just mm, I love that effect it's so easy and so effective <laughs> I'm very sorry for the bad footage you are about to witness. <laughs> I needed to make his forked tail and uh, it just, I was really into the zone and not really looking at where the camera was and like, there, there you go. Can you see what I'm doing? Cause I can barely see what I'm doing. But basically I'm just using Instamorph, which is these little plastic pellets that melt in really, really hot water. And I'm just using that to get the general shape of his tail. And I'm use this instead of clay because it'll dry uh, well when it cools off it'll cool into a very hard plastic and it's just very very durable and so for simple things like this it's great for. Now we have to reveal all the hot glue mess I've made and all the lights so I'm just cutting strategically the faux fur away and then I'm gluing it around the edges of the kind of glue blobs <laughs> i don't really know what to call them but yeah i'm just gluing them strategically so it looks like the skin is torn away from that section and it doesn't like lift away and show all the quilt batting so you want to make sure that you're not pressing that back down like anybody's gonna actually do this but you know if you do that you gotta make sure you do that <laughs> and then i'm just going in with some watered down uh, acrylic paint and painting a fiery type of texture the hot glue is doing its job and just making it all look grimy and creepy and I love it especially with the lights on it looks really weird <laughs> it's awesome now like I mentioned earlier for all of his little metal doodads I'm going to be interpreting them as bones and so I'm going to be sculpting some rib cage bones for his chest and just making them uh all how many times can I say grimy and, and creepy in one video I'm making them grimy and creepy <laughs> <laughs> and I also for his like his has a little chest emblem thingy I decided to make a really creepy skull but I'm not good at sculpting skulls quite yet so I kind of just made this like it's the impression of a skull you know like if you if you look far enough away it's like oh yeah yeah that's a skull but if you look a little closer you're like eh, it's a little it's a little derpy he's cute <laughs> so far away he looks like a very creepy cool skull that I put as his chest emblem <laughs> And then it's just rinse and repeat of all the same steps for the horns. Oh, I don't know what to call these. Oh, I was going to call these the cankles. Oh, no. <laughs> wait, wait. Shackles? No, that doesn't sound right. <laughs> shackles. Shackles. <laughs> what I'm trying to say is that I kept the shackles and I just started them painting them black and then I went over them with a the silver color. Okay, bye. <laughs> Then the final step is to add and glue on all the rib bones and his chest plate and, and all that good stuff. And after all that, he is done. Thank you so much for sticking around for this entire lengthy video. I really appreciate it. I'd like to give a quick shout out to all my patrons. I appreciate your support so, so much. And if you guys enjoy what I do and you like to see more art, please consider maybe becoming a Patreon so that you can get some behind the scenes stuff, some help me with art dolls and, and planning out things and just have a good time. And I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.